Built by skiers, for skiers and riders, Crystal Mountain turns 60 years old this year. Let's reflect on the journey and the steep, deep, and epic times we've shared along the way. The dream started in the 1950s, when a group of skiers came searching for a place to build a winter recreation hotspot. While exploring from old mining cabins in the area, the skiers found their paradise in the shadow of Mount Rainier. It had everything, gorgeous views, epic terrain, and plenty of snow. The terrain of Crystal is second to none. I mean, it's just, it's just an amazing mountain. We got the most vertical, we've got great snow. This is set up for a great ski area. The visionaries brought their idea to the public and 200 fellow skiers raised the cash to develop the ski area by purchasing stock. They broke ground in 1960, and two years later, on December 8th, 1962, Crystal opened for the very first time. I've skied Crystal Mountain ever since they've been open, every winter. The story is if you can ski Crystal Mountain, you can ski anywhere in the world. The snow was soft and the stoke was high that first season. Expansion started right away. Chair 3 was installed the following year, opening up lift access in Green Valley. That same year, Crystal Mountain's Apre scene got a big boost. The Summit House was constructed, and the world-famous Snorting Elk Cellar started pouring beers. Crystal quickly became a snow sports hub, hosting the Collegiate National Championships and the National Alpine Championships, which included a top-to-bottom downhill race. It's always been about the skiing here at Crystal management have always really been centered around the ski and ride experience. In 1970, Crystal opened the longest lift in the United States, stretching from the base all the way up to Campbell Basin. Within 10 years, Crystal developed a culture of hardcore skiing. The Sunnyside Sliders flew into the local spotlight with their daredevil antics and, in 1972, Crystal played host to a World Cup downhill event. As the 70s progressed, so did Crystal. The Gold Hills T-Bar became a triple chair, and High Campbell Double was installed, becoming Crystal's tallest lift. The 80s were highlighted by Crystal's appearance on the silver screen. John Belushi and co. came to film Continental Divide. In 1988, Crystal began their string of firsts. They installed the first high-speed quad lift in Washington, allowing those powder chasers to get first tracks that much quicker. In 1994, Crystal set the state record for snowfall, when six feet of snow fell in 24 hours. Employees worked through the night and were able to open half of the chairs the following day. What goes up must come down. It's an idea all snow sliders understand inherently. After a couple bad years of snow, Crystal was on the verge of bankruptcy. Luckily, before the bank shut down operations, John Kircher and Boyne Resorts purchased the ski area. Crystal was back in business. Improvements started right away. The following year, the first six-pack chair at Crystal Mountain was installed. That was the first high-speed six in the Northwest. In 1997, you know, six, six passenger chairlifts were barely a thing, anyway. Forest Queen still spins today. We built a Chinook lift, which was a high-speed six, in the year 98, 99. I think Boeing just improved this area overall as far as the lifts and the skiing experience went. In 2004, Campbell Basin Lodge was constructed. Campbell Basin Lodge was a great addition to the mountain. Created a, a new place for people to meet during the day, to grab lunch, to warm up. In 2007, the addition of Northway Chair expanded lift access terrain to 2,600 skiable acres making Crystal the biggest resort in Washington. Snowmaking was added to the lower mountain. 
and the first two hybrid snowcats were imported into the USA by Crystal Mountain. Plowing right ahead. In 2008, True TV came to town and filmed a reality TV series about the Crystal Mountain Ski Patrol. Car from the Cascade Mountains of Washington State is a ski resort like no other. Can we change the channel, please? In 2009, the Warren Miller film crew returned to Crystal to film Dynasty. Skiing the Pacific Northwest demands an appreciation for storms that seem like they'll never break. And the dedication to being there when they do. Take Ingrid Backstrom and her brother Arnie. One of the first dates their parents went on was to go skiing at a place called Crystal Mountain. The power was deep and the athletes were sent. You probably know it, but you're very fortunate to have a mountain like this in your own backyard. A decade after the millennium, the first gondola in Washington was installed at Crystal, ascending 2,400 feet from base to summit. And to view Mount Rainier, 11 air miles from the top of the gondola is spectacular. Nobody else has a view like that. Nobody. The secret's out. Crystal gets a ton of snow. Love the powder, love the terrain. This is as good as it gets. Get up here and get some. And this is what dreams are made of. It's snowing again, it's coming down. Mother Nature provides the goods, but we can never underestimate the power she has. Oh, chair six is gone, dude. It was one hand charge. It was literally 10 feet of, of rain-soaked snow. Boyne would replace chair six the following year in what would ultimately be their last great addition to Crystal Mountain. Altero Mountain Company acquired Crystal in 2018 and is committed to investing in Crystal's future. And that brings us back to the present. Whether you've been here for one year or 60, you're an important part of the Crystal Mountain legacy. Without the skiers and riders that call these slopes home, there would be no Crystal Mountain. Crystal welcomes with open arms all snow enthusiasts to share these sacred slopes. We can't wait to ski with you soon.